Hello everyone, welcome to the third episode of the Unblocking Chain podcast series wherein we talk to people who are into Web3, their journey, their experiences and much more. So today we have Vito Rivabella with us. I think those who are coming from the Twitter, only taking the name of Vito should be enough. But we, should, we would like to know more about you, Vito. So can you give us a brief introduction about yourself? 100%. Thank you so much, Atisha, for this opportunity. Uh, I'm Vito. I, uh, I'm a DevRel, Dev Relations, DevRel, or Web Advocate, or Dev Advocate. It really depends from the company, you know. Um, in at Alchemy and in the Web3 space, Alchemy, if you don't know that, is a node provider and developer tools provider. So we build stuff to make the decentralized application development easier, faster, and so on. Uh, but what the DevRel does, that's not a story. I mean, it really depends by the company you're joining. Uh, me, myself, I write content on Twitter, write tutorials, and we go around the world at conferences. And that's super nice, within the web free community. Uh, so, Vito, let's, let's get started uh, with your journey, first of all. Uh, specifically, if we talk about your journey into tech and then moving on to your journey into Web3, that's all, like... I wanted to know from you, your journey so far. Of course, of course. Um, well, m my journey is pretty eclectic because, you know, I wasn't an investor. So my approach with cryptos were more on that, like it's a bubble, it's a speculation. I don't really like it for like the first three years. Very bad decision um, because I was working like in the VFX industry. So cryptos were very, very far away from like our domain. Uh, NFTs weren't a thing. So artists weren't actually thinking about, oh, yes, I could use the blockchain to create, you know, digital art and sell it for millions of dollars, not at all. And so the only thing we knew was about cryptos, right? Um, after, after a while, I think I resigned completely from the VFX industry for a bunch of reasons um, and started studying web development and full stack development. So I was creating pipeline tools before and then JavaScript, it was like, oh my God, I spent a life using C++ and C Sharp. Thank God someone invented JavaScript. Um, and while developing, you know, websites and web apps, I was, I started to be more and more curious about this blockchain because, you know, the first apps were appearing, the first speech and talks about the blockchain, what was the actual like use cases of it. And so I got more and more interested and I have this you know, very amazing friend that continued, you know, poking on me saying, please look at the blockchain, look at the blockchain. Like, okay, good. Uh, let's deploy our, our first smart contract. And it was a game changer completely. I was blown away by the potential of that technology, by the fact that you have like open access to all these data. If you're coming from like a full stack or web, web development background, maybe more backend development background, uh, you know how hard it is to handle data and find APIs that are providing you the data you need for free also, especially if you're an indie developer. And this comes all like built in the blockchain. Plus, you know, we will probably speak about it later on, but, you know, the ability to exchange value with, you know, other people without having an intermediary, this is a, a crazy thing because you don't need banks, you don't need governments. And, you know, there are, there are countries in the world that are not really, like, super efficient for many reasons to, you know, exchange values. Um, so, yeah, I started as a VFX supervisor and then went in straight into web development. Then smart contract development, and had like this revelation from like an artist's point of view that was like, oh my God, documentation is not readable at all. Uh, you, you can't read it. If you if you like and not a CS computer science bachelor graduate graduate, uh, you can't really understand different you know documentation. So I was like, okay, let's rewrite some of those documentations. Let's write a bunch of tutorials. And it looks like many people thought the same, right? So they yeah. looked for for something easier to to read. And so I started creating content on Twitter for around a year. It worked pretty great. And one day I received an amazing message from, and this is another thing we should talk about. It's like opportunities, yeah. building uh, an online presence. But I received this amazing message from Elan, from, Ch uh, from Alchemy, because I actually received a message from Chaylink. <laughs> it was super funny. Uh, it was like, do you want to join us? I was like, sure, let's go with an interview. Huge interview process, like the toughest I've ever had. Uh, technical interviews, developer growth, technical communication and stuff. Um, it went well, it went pretty well. And yeah, let's go. Now working at Alchemy. Uh, amazing mm. company. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah like your journey is uh, super interesting because like i can ask you a lot of questions from your journey itself <laughs> so i do have a lot of questions lined up for you uh, towards the whole session but yeah let's let's uh, talk from from the very beginning so like people do get into web3 into blockchain but the definition of web3 is not very clear into everyone's mind even if even for those who are into the space right so what how would you explain web3 to someone uh who does not have any idea about it it really depends on who's asking the question actually so if it's an engineer uh i would say web3 is implementing the blockchain in your tech stack but again what kind of engineers are you are you a front end developer or your back end developer are you a you know data structure machine learning engineer um the answer would change for all of these domains um if you're like a full stack developer um probably the things you you, you should understand about the blockchain and web3 is that um the blockchain is a series of nodes that can store data on this like public ledger you know the the all good story about yeah. the blockchain and but what what's you know after that how practically speaking he is the job of a full stack engineer working in web3 while you implement the blockchain using libraries on your front end so it's very similar to standard web development instead of using fetch to fetch http apis http https apis you use rpc calls and actually because we like make things easier we decided to wrap those rpc calls into http calls so it doesn't really change right uh, instead of using fetch though you will use web3.js or ether.js or alchemy web3 or other provide or other libraries um but if it's an artist asking me what is web3 i would say web3 is an amazing way to monetize on your art on your creations more than an artist let's call them creators so if you create stuff if you are a builder or an artist you paint stuff um then it's a great way to monetize your audience to monetize your time spent doing your job and come you know coming from a vfx background this touch touches me right in the middle of my heart because it was like lots of developer sorry lots of artists are looking for a job because the vfx the gaming industry the 3d industry is immense uh but of course there are no jobs for everyone so as soon as nfts started becoming a becoming a thing lots of those artists started you know creating nfts and they they made an awful lot of money into the web3 right. space but if i'm talking with an economist that's that's another world story mm-hmm. so my answer when someone asks me what is web3 where web3 is first of all a narrative web3 is the narrative of equality of bringing the power back to the users of giving the ability as i was saying to exchange date sorry money value any kind of value so what is web3 is a narrative we're not yet there we're not yet in the world of fully decentralization we're not yet in the world now this is another story why is not fully decentralized but we're getting there we want to give data back to the people as well so think about it if you go on twitter like you are a youtube creator you create videos for youtube but tomorrow maybe you post something that youtube doesn't like and they shut mm-hmm. your channel down uh, with the blockchain this is impossible no mm-hmm. one can delete your content from the blockchain no one can delete your stuff from the block- blockchain there are you know decentralized applications that are indexing this data and they're showing this data to people in a very like ui ux friendly way but that data will always be available to you the same applies for twitter the same applies for facebook don't let's don't talk about facebook of <laughs> it <laughs> but this is what is web3 yeah uh, I, i really like the way you explain i think uh, whoever is going to watch this video even if they are not from a cs or tech background they'll get to know what web3 is for them exactly and uh, that was the main reason of bringing you here because you have shared a lot of stuff on twitter talk, like you have simplified the whole uh, whole system into very easily consumable chunks and that clearly state is stated in your talks uh, whenever you talk about this stuff i think that's 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 really commendable so kudos to you on that uh, so bito now since you said that uh, you did not have a tech background back in you, uh, your university so did you do a proper uh, a tech degree to get into tech or or 
you learned everything from scratch because there are a lot of people who want to get into this but they don't know how so first i want to know your story like how like did you had a degree of that sort or how did you get started and then we'll talk more about how to get into web3 okay all right uh, let me start saying i dropped off the university oh da, 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 this, da, da, da. Is like, <laughs> this is something that surprises people a lot so um okay let, let's let's make this super clear um i always have been super curious about tech so saying that i don't have a tech background is partially true i mean i don't have like an, an academic uh tech background i don't have like a, a straightforward background that brought me from you know studying uh python when i was 12 years old to going through c++ and then i got my degree no it did happen um but i was like 6 years old when i started you know these mounting all these laptops in my father's office try to understand what was going on inside um the thing though is that i don't really see a difference between art and programming um when you especially in 2022 when you think about programming don't think about complex algorithms and data structures think about you creating something to solve a problem again this is the only thing you should think about uh when when thinking oh my maybe i want to start to code but i'm not good at math yeah it doesn't matter okay i have a no lot of very very talented friends there are programmers in fang in companies in san francisco in the silicon valley in top notch companies seriously they're not good at math they're good at creating stuff they're good at building and the cool thing is that probably there are like computer science graduated people graduate and um, that are way smarter than us that build tools to make development easier now that said um is through i started okay the question is did i do a cs degree yes i started a cs degree i did it for like one year and then i dropped off i also did the academy of fine arts arts for like two years and then i dropped off and not because i was bored right not because i didn't want to go to the university anymore but because um there is so much to discover and when you start learning programming you start connecting a novel lot of dots because it really helps you learning how to think it actually teaches how to learn it teaches to learn by doing and not like staring at tutorials for hours but okay let me let me build you like a road map to learn, to become a first a web developer and then a web free developer why that because probably it's better for you to start with web you know default web development not because it's easier but because there are more resources and there are more people that wrote you know better resources actually um so you know web development is nothing more than learning javascript uh and then you know learning of course html and css and javascript how can we forget that yeah <laughs> those are like if you go on twitter and write probably in the search bar like web development roadmap there are thousands of these posts and i love those because every day actually i receive a bunch of messages asking hey how do i get started as a web developer and the thing right. is that okay html css javascript do you need um a degree for that not at all i mean we are in the era of internet and you can learn for free on youtube you can learn for free on free code camp there are a bunch of websites where you can learn for free also udemy i think has a bunch of free courses hmm. so um you learn these things and then you upscale so you you start learning a framework probably right so you pick react or you pick view or you pick svelte doesn't really matter and then you get bored of writing css code because you know every time you have to write like thousands of lines to style a button and so you start using things like tailwind css amazing now you can build a fully fledged front end but what about the data okay let's go with the data so you take probably you learn javascript great let's learn node js that is nothing more than a library and a bunch of you know boilerplate new boilerplate when i say boilerplate because from my understanding probably the audience will be very beginner uh when i say boilerplate i mean the, the amount of code that you need to write to run a basic application right, right? so you learn how to write those the boilerplate you need how to set up an api amazing now you have a fully oh sorry connect the database this is pretty important and yeah. also everything on a domain uh, on a host or maybe on aws and great now you are a full stack developer um oh, i'm simplifying a lot i mean this will take probably <laughs> one two years um uh, and a lot of practice again learn by doing is key 
<laughs> but this this is the core, right? If you're able to set up like a fully fledged front end application, it doesn't need to be like the fancier in the world, but a fully fledged front end application with a database and APIs to exchange data. Well, mm -hmm. you have done like 75% of the job of a full stack developer. But then you might become curious about web free. That's great. So what you'll need to learn, first, you'll need to decide which chain should I use? Well, there are a bunch of different chains. The more you dig deeper into web free, the more you'll understand. Probably you know about Ethereum. Probably you heard about Polygon. Probably you didn't hear, you didn't hear about Arbitrum or Optimism. So there are EVM and not EVM compatible. Probably for EVM compatible um, blockchains, you will use Solidity. So you'll need to learn Solidity. What is Solidity? Solidity is programming language, very, very new, recent, uh, that mm -hmm. helps you developing, creating smart contracts. So you'll need out lear to learn how to write smart contracts, and then you'll need to learn how to deploy those smart contracts. So you probably need to learn hard that or um, Ganache or Truffle actually allows you to to create smart to deploy smart contracts as well. And then when you finish learning all of these, you'll need probably to connect your front end that you remember you already learned it because you learned JavaScript, HTML, CSS. Still, when you're like a front end master now, uh, you'll need to connect it with your your smart contracts. That's great. Now you'll need to learn WebFree.js or Ether.js or other like RPC wrappers, RPC call wrappers to communicate with the blockchain. Once you understand how to do all of these, well done. You can consider yourself, so yourself a beginner, pretty decent WebFree developer. And then, but the thing, what is very important about programming is that learning JavaScript, as you may have noticed from my speech, Learning JavaScript, CSS, HTML, WebFree.js, Solidity is super straightforward. It's just a matter of like watching a tutorial, repeating the tutorial like 10 times in a row, and then you'll eventually learn it, you know, yeah. unless you, you don't really like it. And that's another world story. Uh, but what's important when you want to become a programmer is being curious, is mm -hmm. willing to understand, okay, now I deployed my smart contract using an EVM compatible blockchain. Now, let's, let me try using Flow. Let me try using, you know, other blockchains that are not. The Binance Smart Chain, those are completely, or oh, Solana, right? Using a yeah. different programming language because they're using Rust that is sick. Like Rust is a sick programming language that I love, <laughs> honestly. Um, so you need to be curious because it's curiosity that makes the experience, right? Building projects, shipping projects, failing. Um, so yeah, th this is pretty much the roadmap. Maybe I ran told a bit, but it was super important to specify it. Yeah, uh, that that's a pretty, I would say, oh, overview of things. But yeah, if one know how, what step uh, the person need to take in order to get into this space, that's a perfect roadmap that you have shared with the audience. Okay, now having a after having a full fledged conversation on Web three. Uh, the next thing that I, that is coming to my mind right now is since you said that after learning all these things, after sharing stuff online, uh, you got contacted by Chainlink, Alchemy. So uh, since you are a developer advocate or developer evangelist at Alchemy, so the very first question I wanted to ask you is what does Alchemy do? Because we all have heard about it, but exactly what it does, I think only a devrel from Alchemy would be able to tell the best? <laughs> that, that's a great question, and thank you for asking this. Um, the best way probably to explain about Alchemy is think about AWS, right? Think about the cloud. So first of all, Alchemy is a node provider. Now, what is a node provider? When you want to build your own decentralized application, as we said, you have two choices. Or you spin up your node, your own node that is Ethereum or Flow or Arbitrum or Polygon, or you use a node provider. Why should you use a node provider over like a, your own hosted node? Because it's more scalable. We don't really have just one node. We can give you as many nodes you want. So no matter how many you know, users there are on your platform at that time, at a certain point in time, you will have enough bandwidth to handle all of them. Um, second, reliability, right? So if you have your own node, you need to maintain it. You need to change the hardware. You need to do an awful lot of stuff. If you're not, you know, if you have like your own computer that is hosting the node, you need to do an awful lot of stuff, update the software, make sure that everything is synchronized. Mm -hmm. 
So this kind of reliability. Second kind of reliability is data reliability. Because think about if you have like four nodes, you, you buy four computers or you go, I don't know, you host four nodes of Ethereum on a, on a cloud server and then you start asking things to those nodes. Turns out that not all the nodes are synchronized at the same time. So you need to create something to synchronize. And this is an awful lot of work. You can see the work adds in up, adds in up right? Alchemy provides this like out of the box and also for free because we have like a, a gigantic freemium package that is like 400, 300 million CUs, compute units. On top of that though, um, think about AWS. They have servers, right? They have amazing servers that you can rent and build your application and host your applications on. But on top of those servers, they have tools, tools that will help you host your, your web app better, faster, uh, with more libraries. So they have an SDK, they have libraries. And we have this thing called enhanced APIs. What, what are enhanced APIs? Now, what is the biggest issue when dealing with the blockchain? Trust me, I'm smiling, but I would cry. I would cry in this case, is <laughs> indexing the blockchain, um, gathering data. We said that the blockchain is very similar to a database, right? But unfortunately, there is not a SQL. So there is not a SQL. Mm -hmm. um, so you can say, I don't know, uh, in table or select all from table. You cannot. You, should need, you would need to go back from the deployment of a smart contract or the deployment of whatever you're looking for and start rebuilding all the transactions. So if I'm asking you know, how many shit coins, Shiba coins, just messing this up, or Atisha coins, do this user has? Um, you, you don't know, right? You need to rebuild yeah. all the transactions. So we give these by default. Also, think about NFTs. You want to understand, like, get all the owners of an uh, NFT collection. Good luck. Mm -hmm. uh, we built a thing called NFT API that allows you to talk with, to ask for, like, I don't know, all the owners of an NFT collection, all the NFTs in an NFT collection, all the metadata that is also hosted on the chain of an NFT collection. That's another thing. Okay. Now, okay. and we have another an awful lot of tools on top of that. I really invite you to try this out because it's it's crazy, right? The first time I tried Alchemy, I was like, oh my god, this is a game changer again. After developing my first bar contract, I was also using Alchemy. It was like, whoa, my brain is completely <laughs> blown away. And then, no, on top of that, for those data nerds, I'm super data nerds. Like, if I see a dashboard, I fall in love, like completely. That's crazy, okay? That's not even mm -hmm. good, probably. But we have like plenty of data that you can use, like okay. uptimes, response times, um, CUs use, users, calls to the Ethereum blockchain, seriously, a lot of things. On top of that, though, we have a very cool thing that I think it's like the reason I joined Alchemy is that we have an amazing team. We have mm -hmm. a like all-star team of engineers and as soon as you start building on Alchemy, they will help you. It's crazy how much they will help you. Like we shout out to our like CPE, they're called me here and reshop. They're crazy. I can see every day they're like <laughs> behind their laptop with Telegram, Discord, and another bunch of things. They're helping all the customers and people um, yeah. debugging their applications. So we have node provider here, developer tools here, amazing team that will help you build your stuff here. And why not the freemium package that will actually help you like uh, create your application, test your applications without spending a single cent. So that's pretty crazy. So yeah. this is Alchemy and it's an environment. It's an environment that will help you, help you build more reliable and scalable and faster decentralized applications. Yeah, thank, thanks Vito for that. Uh, it it gave me more clarity and I hope who will be watching this video right now would uh, want to build it in Web3. So they'll for sure uh, try out Elgami and would love to connect with you obviously on Twitter and if, at other places you are available. So uh, Vito, since we touched upon developer relation uh, that you are a DevRel uh, and you are currently working at Alchemy. So what I want to understand is, so DevRel is something that most of the people have different definition of, depending on the company, that I do agree. But here at Alchemy, uh, what, what your role as a DevRel looks like, is it more of community building? Is it more of coding or uh, say content creation? What is it? Um, it's all of that uh, at the same time, actually. Um, Okay, DevRel at Alchemy is doing all of these things 
and nothing at the same time because we are a big team, right? We are six people and we're all working together to create the best documentation to give assistance to our community on Discord, plus, mm -hmm. you know, talking with people at conferences, doing speeches, um, going and organize hackathons and workshops. Uh, but the DevRel, it's true that DevRel definition is different amongst different companies, but the ultimate goal for a DevRel is understanding what developers want mm -hmm. and uh, call the engineers and tell them, yo, Look that Atisha is asking for a new way to mint NFTs without creating smart contracts. Okay, great. Let's de develop it. Or the job of a developer advocate is calling, you know, writing to Atisha saying, hey, Atisha, are you all good? Are you having issues? Are you developing? What are you developing? Uh, maybe we can find a better solution together. Uh, or better, maybe you have an issue and go on Google. My job is to make sure that your question is answered on Google. If you want to know how to develop a smart contract, I want to answer that question. So mm -hmm. it's making it easier for developers to join a certain domain, not just web free. There are dev advocates in web two as well, right? They want to onboard more developers using their platforms, their tools, their analytics and dashboards or whatever, because they know those are useful. They know they can change the way developers approach development. And they want to make sure that the company they're working for, for this, in this case, Alchemy, provides you the best way to create your decentralized application. So if you having issues, I don't know, do you, lots of people want to develop on uh, Solana. That's great. Let's do something to help you develop on Solana. Mm -hmm. um, lots of people are going to ETH Amsterdam. That's amazing. Let's go <laughs> to Amsterdam. So to me, this is like a, $100 million job and not because I'm getting paid $100 million, of course, but because, you know, you can travel. I remember during my interview and it was, they were like, what do you like to do? And I was like, I like to travel and I like to talk about tech. And they were like, okay, great. You're a dev advocate. <laughs> and it was crazy, <laughs> right? Because this is what dev advocates do. Yeah. Plus in Alchemy, um, we're a pretty, pretty small team. So we do a lot of, lot of stuff, uh, you know, startup environment in hypergrowth. So lots of different stuff. So handling social media, uh, customer support, mm -hmm. customer success, uh, interviews with the people. So it's super amazing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So um, you said that um, after your online presence that you showed on Twitter specifically, uh, you got contacted by Chainlink and Alchemy and now you are a DevRel at Alchemy. So uh, like to get into DevRel, how would you guide a person who want to get into this space what are the key ingredients of being a developer relation like um, what are the things that they should keep in mind in order to get into it um first build an audience this is pretty important but what what build an audience means uh, i wrote a guide i think is zero to 20k followers on twitter and it's hosted on feedive.com uh, this is an amazing software i use uh, actually, web app I use. Um, but be passionate. Think, this is the first thing I think every day, and is every person matters, right? Every single person. So what hap was, you, what usually happens to people is that they start building an audience that is super valuable by itself, right? When you start building an audience, people will think that you're. This is not even true, but people will start thinking that you're more important, more knowledge, more wise, more more appropriate. Yeah to the certain kind of jobs. And I love the, the quote that is, no one will support you until it's popular to support you. And this is super true. And there's a you know, bad reality of our world, but right. you know, use it at your own advantage and build an online presence. You know, no one is blocking you. That all of these people um, asking you questions, writing you DMs, um, they're not like bots, right? They're people that are willing to enter the space. So get passionate about answering their questions. Get passionate about talking with them. Get passionate about sharing content that helps us, you know, help them actually. Um, getting better in that domain, entering that domain, learning more about that domain. Yeah. Um, share content, show up every day. You know, the old uh, advices for social media management that is, it's a long run, it's, it's a marathon, not a sprint. So don't cry, don't, don't, don't leave, don't, don't drop the, 
you know your your challenge don't stop creating a, an audience just because you don't see results in two months you won't yeah. become popular in two months it can't happen you can you can create all the viral posts you want but one viral post won't, won't bring you more than like 500 followers more than 10,000 followers right if you want to reach 1 million followers then you gotta work every day and pretty hard this is super mm -hmm. important plus um share things that have a value now i see so many people that are trying to trick the algorithm writing you know uh, the same stuff over and over again or like super clickbaity posts yeah. uh, this doesn't work anyone this is not the job of devrel uh think if you want to become a devrel or an influencer this and this is pretty different <laughs> right? okay. so if you want to become an influencer you can say whatever you want if you want to become yeah. a devrel it's better if you focus on more like useful things but be realistic useful stuff like tutorials and educational content that is actually useful won't get the same engagement of like a viral post because they're built different right unless yeah. you're very big as an account so take your time Show up every day, uh, bring value to your users. Think that your users are humans and are asking the question to you because you are the person that is showing up as an expert in your field, right? Yeah. Th that you know what you're talking about. So answer their questions. Uh, plus, um, think about community creation, community building. So it's not just like a solo game where you go create your stuff, post a bunch of selfies and that's it but it's about retweeting interesting stuff from the community helping sharing the voice helping sharing stories of the people that are in the community i've been sharing success and of course mm -hmm. failures because this is interesting right ultimately okay. this is what people want to hear uh, but yeah this is probably my suggestions for build why to build an online presence as a dev rep. Mm. And, I, and i completely agree on that that uh, sharing of uh, like not sharing something that is helpful or sharing some something that is bringing uh, knowledge to the people is more important th rather than going viral specifically we are talking about devrel because those type of content is consumable on a long time term basis it's not only that today your post got viral and it was famous for like say 15 days or even one month or so and later down the line no one even bothers to give it a watch yeah and let me add this so the roi on creating content is super important use your time wisely because it's a full-time job creating an, uh, an online presence is a freaking online like full-time job i spent like eight hours a day for one year um had savings from my previous job i'm saying that just because people every time ask me oh but how did you eat uh, how did you pay your bills i was like <laughs> yeah i had savings i'm not lying to you sorry uh, but yeah I mean, take your time, build your online presence, think about the ROI. Uh, if you really want to leave a mark on people, go on YouTube, use videos. Those are super, super important. Yeah. And uh, for those who don't know, Vito is soon coming on YouTube. Uh, that's another way of bringing Vito on YouTube pretty soon because I think he's delaying a bit, <laughs> right? I was waiting for my new setup. So today uh, I finished setting up my microphone and I hope it's working properly. Uh, but yeah, yeah, 100%. I mean, I'm, I, I'm seeing that we have amazing YouTuber in the web free space. We have you, we have Nader David, we have Patrick Collins, we have uh, Griffith. Uh, we have a bunch of people that are doing an amazing job. But try to compare the numbers with like JavaScript developers. Right. If you, if you write like JavaScript I don't know, like full-fledged course to learn everything in 10 seconds. There's probably like a math genius from anywhere in the world that build that with an amazing structure and stuff. But if you look like for web-free stuff, then there is a huge gap, huge, huge content gap that we as DevRels, but we also as web-free developers have the, you know, we need to, to fill up the, this gap. For sure, for sure. So the plan is to create, you know, Solidity tutorials. I'm more EVM oriented again, EVM, Ethereum, mm -hmm. virtual machine oriented. So I built on top of that. I built on top of that. And the idea is to create the Solidity courses and then how to develop decentralized applications and how to bring more secure smart contracts, deploy more secure smart contracts. And I'm also planning a couple of collaborations, maybe with you also. Why not? <laughs> for sure, for sure. <laughs> yeah. So um, since we are talking uh, about the things that you need to do, so uh, 
being very inquisitive about devrel uh, i i just wanted to ask since you got uh, um, got interviewed by chainlink by alchemy so uh, what are the things that the companies look into people while hiring for this role that that's a great question that's an amazing question um okay devrel again it really depends on the company yeah there are companies that are more on the marketing side so they're more oriented towards asking you marketing questions and growth questions so how do you uh like bring more developers uh, to use our platform or how would you handle the social medias of our company how would you do this how would you do that um other companies are more tech oriented so they're more like okay let's solve this algorithm let's create this algorithm let's create this data structure let's create this application in x amount of time other companies have both so thinking about uh one of the like interview processes i went through when i applied as that as a devrel i remember I had like for sure tech interviews so that's that's super funny because the tech interview always scares everyone everyone when i say Um the next step is a tech interview. They were like, "Okay, can you give me like two months that I can prepare for?" <laughs> I was like, "Yeah, it's it's easy. Don't panic. I mean, you're not applying as a for a full stack engineer, a backend engineer, a, or or ops engineer engineer. Um uh, that that's much much harder, right? Yeah. Uh, that's about, you know, scalability architectures and communication protocols and low level programming languages and memory management. It, it can be everything. Um for DevRels is usually like a pretty mild uh tech interview where we just like verify oh you know, uh, do you know how to code do you know the basic principles of you know OP or or stuff um but what's very very important though is other than that is technical communication so how do you communicate technical concepts can it mean that like I don't I know nothing about economy and when I speak with an economist Jesus Christ Okay <laughs> you cannot understand anything they're like are you trying to make this harder because you don't want me to join your space is that what you're trying to do i mean just tell me i i, I will ask someone else right uh, or 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 there are other people that are more like i remember like more google right because I, why that because like <laughs> two weeks ago someone called me goofy was super funny and and i didn't know the actual exact translation translation of goofy and and i was like okay let me check on google and google was like goofy just like a squirrel I was like wow <laughs> wow this makes perfect sense thank you so this is super funny um so technical communication be able to communicate correctly but also in a very easy to to understand way it's key for a devrel i mean you spend almost all your time speaking with people about that then probably there's a very huge component of flexibility so uh, devrels are used to you know uh, go go all, or, all around the world so there'll be like questions about this and of course community engagement and building so like helping people to solve their issues or creating a discord community how to engage with developers uh, all of these things so th- that's pretty much what you'll find in devrel interview um again different companies have different ways of of interviewing devrels so it's very about the company you're going to what what you can ask though this is super important you can ask for the interview loop beforehand so you can ask um okay what are the steps which step will I need to go through and companies will usually give those to you mm-hmm. you might also have like i don't know a presentation a take home project the take home project is another cool thing so companies will give you like uh, an assignment like i don't know talk about x topic uh you have x minutes uh and please create x y slides um and you can talk about whatever you want i yeah. remember this thing. this this was crazy i had to talk about whatever i wanted okay everything i could have talked about how to make pasta and i was at mm-hmm. the interview with like a <laughs> lead engineer lead blockchain engineer and he was like okay vito just tell me whatever you want what do you want to talk about i was like i want to talk about the blockchain Okay. And it was like wow that, are you sure? I was like yes that's a great idea. So be wise with your decisions of course. I mean it went great because it was super chill but you know be wise with your decisions. Uh, and and this is also something people evaluate, right? So you have an open decision, you can make the decision you want. Um how are you you know how are you evaluating 
your decisions, your choices is very important. Okay, great, great. Uh, I would not go deeper into um, like how did the processes look like at the companies that you apply to because uh, the things that you have talked about gave an overview of how the processes usually look like and that's what we want to tell the audience who are watching this video right now. Well, so, if you want to know more, we, we are hiring. So you can just apply and ask for the interview loop. Now, uh, um, that's more of a personal question. So, um, Vito, what, which are some of the things that would you call as pros and cons of being a DevRel? <laughs> okay um this is super personal though okay you know i'm not speaking on behalf of my colleagues not at all so sorry all of you um personal oh my god this, this is personal but we can tra you can travel a lot no no i want to answer because this is super important because i think yeah. this is something people should evaluate traveling a lot means that you won't spend much time at home and this means that if you have someone at home Okay, you need to make sure that that person is okay with it. Okay, this is important. If you're trying to join like a DevRel position, if you're applying for as a DevRel, right, or you have and you have like a boyfriend or a girlfriend or are married, and make sure like your your half, your other half is is aware of that and the implications of that. Trust me, do it. <laughs> second, this is important. Um, second, um. And this is to look back, to recognize the signal from the noise, because sometimes you might think that um, going to conferences is 100% a good ROI. Sometimes it's not, all right? Hmm. Because sometimes people, I mean, it's cool to go to conferences. It's cool to meet people from the web-free space. It's amazing to, you know, give speeches and, you know, so do hackathons and workshops and see people building cool stuff. But sometimes you need to evaluate, okay, uh, should I create this one week course and spend this week creating videos for YouTube so that everyone can enjoy it? Or should I go one week in Paris and talk with people and give speeches there? It depends. It depends. Sometimes yeah. it's better to go to Paris. Sometimes it's better to record your video and post it on your YouTube channel and help more people and reach more people. So this is something you should be aware. Um, definitely jet lag. Jet lag is a huge component of a DevRel. I mean, I, I'm changing time zone once every two weeks. And what the, the huge con about it, it was like, it was Saturday and I felt like super nauseated. I was like, oh my God, I, I'm a hypochondriac, <laughs> right? So I was like, oh my God, I'm dying. I'm sure like tomorrow I will be back. <laughs> and at the end, I forgot to eat for like 34 hours. That's why I was nauseated. Because I, okay. I was, yeah, I was jet lagged. So when I, sh when sh I should have eaten, I was like, no, I'm not hungry at all. So I will eat later on. But then I mm. forgot because I started working and I was doing my stuff. And it was like, oh my God, it's one o'clock a.m. I should go to sleep. Forgot. Uh, it was funny. <laughs> uh, pros, though, pros, and there are a lot of pros. I mean, you, this is crazy. You travel the world, okay? You travel the world every month. And this is amazing. You travel the world to speak about tech. Yeah. This is super amazing. Uh, you meet an awful lot of great, amazing, and super inspiring and smart people every day. Like today, you. Yesterday, I met two guys that are building a DeFi project that is sick, completely sick. And I was like, oh, my God, you're a genius. Uh, but every day, you meet someone. Um, third, that is not about being a DevRel, but is working in the web face space. And this is something that people oversee usually, is you, as soon as you start working in the web face space, you have like a privileged position on the like sneak peeks of the upcoming projects. So yeah. you can tell where the, this industry is going. I mean, we're super early. Everyone knows each other. So if mm -hmm. you tell me where are NFTs going, I can tell you for sure that NF NFTs are going toward utilities more than JPEGs and music, as you said, and game will become a thing. And it's not because like I spend my days reading news and trying to understand what's going on in the industry, but it's because I'm spending my whole days talking with people that are building the industry. They're like, this is what we're building. This is what we're releasing. So, hmm. and this is mind blowing. Plus people in web free are DJs, completely DJs. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you that uh, I'm giving away like a bunch of stickers. Um, and I started asking for the address to those people. So I was like, okay, I need your full name and address. Of course, they started sending me their MetaMask wallet address. 
Wow. Of course, they're real DJs. I was like, oh my God, no, I cannot send a sticker to, to the wallet address. So, you know, that, that's amazing. People in Web3 are great. And being a DevRel, it's wow. It's really wow. Yeah, I, I can uh, see the enthusiasm of you explaining DevRel, the pros of it. So I can um, vouch on it that DevRel is something that's, that's really interesting for someone who loves to create content, who loves to talk about tech, who loves to... Uh, build things and uh, communicate with people I think that's what if you are interested in then you should really look for opportunities in this domain yeah 100% I, I remember the day I discovered thank you Nader for for making me discover that that rel was a thing because I spent my whole you know life talking like oh, also when I was like in the classroom, I was talking, and the teacher would like stop talking, please, and I continued talking. <laughs> but I, I, I'm super. I don't have ADHD, right? So I'm pretty chill, but I, I'm on the on the hedge, okay? So I was like, oh my god, I need to talk, I need to do things, I need to to speak about tech. I'm super nerd. I'm super nerd actually. And with that rally, you can do it. You get paid again, a third time, because this is super important to travel and talk about tech. That's okay. it. That's the biggest simplification of what a DevRel is. Yeah. Uh, so this brings me uh, to the end of our conversation. And I don't know how did the time pass by. And I really, really enjoyed this conversation. Uh, and it, it was really a pleasure to have you. And you talking about stuff, explaining things is very easy to consume. And I'm quite sure that who will be watching uh, this video right now, they'll like they'll take a lot of knowledgeable stuff from this video so thank you so much for coming the pleasure was all mine thank you for everyone for listening to this um seriously again let me let me add this thing we're hiring at alchemy so if you're looking to join the web free space and you're an engineer um first try alchemy because it's crazy um uh, second apply to alchemy because it's crazy so the reasons <laughs> are the same actually just depend on where you want to stand in the industry yeah